people love to hear stories about ancient Egypt. Egypt is one of the few countries in the world where most of the tourists who go there do so because of its history, rather than any of its present-day attractions. Not that there's anything wrong with present-day Egypt. We simply never get tired of hearing about amazing finds in Egypt, and we'd love to share this collection with you. We begin with a strange and recent discovery the finding of crocodile heads inside the tombs of ancient Egyptian nobles in December 2022. This puzzling discovery was made by archaeologists excavating the Theban necropolis of El Asasif, not far from the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut. The crocodile heads are distributed between two tombs within the necropolis, the tomb of an official called Cheti, who served the pharaoh Nebhepetra Mentuhotep II over 4,000 years ago, and that of another unknown member of the same royal court. There are nine crocodile heads in the tombs, all of which were wrapped in fabric, but neither mummified nor otherwise preserved. All nine of the animals were Nile crocodiles, which are indigenous to Egypt. During the time of ancient Egypt, crocodiles were associated with the crocodile-headed god known as Sobek, who was associated with fertility and power. It's unusual to find crocodile heads in a tomb though, and especially within the tombs of people who were officials and administrators rather than rulers. Work is ongoing, but at present we have to say that the symbolic meaning of the skulls is unknown. The crocodile heads aren't the only puzzling ancient Egyptian discovery from December 2022. That same month, Archaeologists uncovered a series of late-period tombs while excavating a site called Tel El Dir in the country's Damietta Governorate. All of the tombs contain tiny decorative items made of gold foil. The preliminary findings of the experts responsible for the discovery are that the tombs belong to Egypt's 26th dynasty, which began around 2,600 years ago and lasted around 60 years. It's also known as the Sa'it period. The presence of golden decorative items is odd in the contexts of the nature of the burials. Most of them are pit burials, and even those that aren't are encased with simple mud brick lining, rather than anything more formal. Some of the gold foil items are depictions of ancient Egyptian deities, including Horus, Bastet, and Isis. Others are harder to identify. Tel El Dair was the site of a crossroads of civilizations between the Egyptians, the Romans, and the Greeks. But these discoveries date to a time long before the Greeks or the Romans arrived. It's likely that the items were thrown into the pits by the friends and relatives of the dead. But if they could afford such items, why didn't they pay for more lavish burials? Workers living in Egypt 3,600 years ago had better rights and protections than many workers in the United States of America today. That sounds shocking, but it's true. In 2015, archaeologists conducting a dig in Deir el Medina at the location of a village built for workers who built royal tombs. During those digs, the archaeologists found ancient papyri, and on the papyri was some surprising information. The texts state that the workers were paid a monthly salary, received free housing, were granted servants to help with laundry and grinding grain, and were entitled to paid sick leave. They were also guaranteed access to a doctor at all times, so you could say that the Egyptians had state-funded health care. On top of all of this, the same perks and privileges were also afforded to the families and children of the workers, so long as they lived with them in the village. Historians suspect that the Egyptian government provided these luxuries as a means of ensuring that workers stayed fit and productive, rather than as a nicety. But we're sure that many people watching this video would love to get paid sick leave and free medical care today. Of all the places in Egypt you'd expect to have been thoroughly examined by archaeologists by now, Cairo is close to the top of the list. It is, after all, the capital of modern-day Egypt. That's not the case, though, as the discovery of no fewer than 59 ancient sarcophagi, all of which were sealed when they were found, was recently confirmed at a site not far from the Saqqara pyramids. The discoveries were confirmed by Khalid El Anani, the country's tourism and antiquities minister. 
who says that the coffins were buried in three well shafts, still have mummies inside them, and are approximately 2,600 years old. To prove this, one of the coffins was opened in the presence of journalists and photographers. While not as well known as the pyramids on the Giza Plateau, there are at least 11 pyramids on the Saqqara Plateau, with perhaps more hidden beneath the sand. As such, El Anani believes that these burials could be a step towards a much larger discovery, perhaps a whole new pyramid. Coffins have been found here before, but generally wooden ones. Despite being buried in pits, the sarcophagi are believed to belong to people who held relatively high social status at the time of their death. You may not have heard of Saad el Kafara, but you may know it by its nickname. It's the legendary Dam of the Infidels. It was first discovered by Jörg Sveinforth in 1885, but we find out more about it each time it's studied by a new generation of archaeologists and historians. Recently, experts have become aware that it may not be deserving of its fearsome reputation. In fact, it was most likely never finished at all. Construction work on the masonry embankment dam in Helwan began around 4,650 years ago, with the intention that the structure would help to control and contain floods. Some scientists believe it to be the oldest dam of this size in the world. Somewhat ironically, it's now believed that about 10 years after construction work started, the dam was destroyed by a flood before it could be finished. By that time, it was over 111 miles long, with an average height of 14 feet all the way along. It was an impressive feat of construction, but it appears that it may have been ill-suited to its purpose. The Egyptians appear to have realized that, as construction work never resumed after the dam's destruction. We're returning to Cairo for another striking discovery. This time, it's a huge red brick building that's thought to date back to the region's Greco-Roman period. The purpose of the building isn't yet known, but what's left of it can be found in the Sa El Hagar site within Garbia province, which is just to the north of Cairo. Within the ruins of the building, archaeologists found a single gold coin bearing a depiction of Ptolemy III, who ruled more than 2,300 years ago. The coin is in near immaculate condition. Smaller and less significant finds within the red building's walls include terracotta statues, tools made of bronze, pottery vessels, and a small, striking statue of a ram. Some archaeologists are keen to have the building declared as a temple, but archaeologists and historians often have an unfortunate habit of declaring any building that they don't understand or can't otherwise classify to be a temple. The building had chambers, a courtyard, and a main entrance, which means that it may have been a temple, but it could also have been a government administration building or something entirely different. Next up, we have the Bull Palette. Rather than being a complete artifact, it's a fragment of an ancient Egyptian gray rack palette. Historians are as sure as they can be that it was once used as a palette for the grinding of cosmetics. Experts have been able to date it to the Nakata III period, which covers the final two centuries of the 4th millennium BCE. Like a more famous Egyptian artifact called the Gebel el Arak knife, the bull palette is in the Egyptian collection at the Louvre in France. Scientists have never been able to identify the material that the piece is made from, but it's highly likely to be either schist or mudstone. The front of the palette features an icon of a bull overpowering a warrior, which is where the name of the artifact comes from. The right half was missing when the palette was found, but it's likely to have contained a matching image. Historians have long wondered whether the fortified walled city that covers much of the rest of the front of the piece is real or fictional, but we may never get an answer to that question. Our next artifact goes by quite a few names. The most common of them is the Battlefield Palette, but you may also have seen or heard of it referred to as the Giraffe's Palette, the Lion Palette, or the Vulture's Palette. Aside from being a large and beautiful work of art, the palette is notable because it contains some of the oldest known uses of Egyptian hieroglyphs. It's thought that the Battlefield Palette, so named because of the battle scene that's depicted on its surface, belongs to the Egyptian Nakata III period, 
which began around 5,000 years ago and lasted for two centuries, ending in the founding of the first dynasty. The battlefield pallet is badly broken, with several pieces missing. Because of this, it's impossible to say with any confidence whether the battle scene it contains is a record of a real battle or an imagined one. While there's a strong argument that says this priceless artifact should be returned to Egypt, it's currently on display in the British Museum in London, England. A little over 4,000 years ago, a brand new pigment was invented in ancient Egypt. Today, we call it Egyptian blue, but it was originally developed to adorn a crown on a famous bust of Nefertiti. We have no way of knowing whether the chemists who came up with it were aware of what they were doing at the time, but there's far more to this pigment than just a pretty color. This brilliant shade of blue can reduce energy consumption and can also amplify solar energy output if applied in the right way. In early 2020, a German research team even used Egyptian blue to create new nano sheets for infrared imaging. To give the substance its proper name, Egyptian blue is calcium copper silicate and is thought to be one of the first ever artificial colors ever created by human hands. It's a stunning color and was used in the time of the New Kingdom to decorate everything from statues to sarcophagi. When a very thin layer is exfoliated from a grain of the pigment, a nano sheet 100,000 times thinner than a human hair can be created, and the properties of that sheet are ideal for optical imaging. Now we know that this ancient substance might be responsible for the next great era of microscopy. It's generally believed that the most popular musical instrument in ancient Egypt was the sistrum, and yet it may not have been used as a musical instrument at all. This is a sistrum, and if its design is familiar, it's probably because you've seen it on hundreds of ancient Egyptian carvings and paintings without ever realizing it. According to legend, shaking a sistrum brought good fortune. If the Nile was flooding, you shook a sistrum at it. If your loved ones were sick, you shook a sistrum at them too. The instruments could be made from almost any material, including brass, clay, and wood, and made a loud jangling sound when shaken. Based on the works left to us by the Egyptians, they appear to have been owned by women more commonly than by men. Curiously, examples of ancient Minoan sistrums have been found in and around the island of Crete, and appear to have many similarities with the Egyptian variants. Even more curiously, the clay versions of the instrument can't possibly have created a viable sound for music. So what purpose might they really have served? The mortuary temple of Amenhotep III once stood on the eastern bank of the city of Luxor in Egypt at a site known as Karnak. The temple has long since crumbled to pieces and fallen away, but the enormous statues that were placed there to guard it are still standing continuing to serve a duty that they've performed for at least 3,400 years. They're known as the Colossi of Memnon and would probably be in better condition if they hadn't been badly damaged by an earthquake in the year 21. The fact they survived an earthquake that destroyed the temple they once guarded isn't the mystery though. The mystery is why one of them used to sing or whistle. In the years following the earthquake, the easternmost of the two colossi was reported by many observers to emit a singing or whistling noise during sunrise, no explanation for which could ever be found. Pliny the Elder and Strabo both observed the phenomenon in person, and the Romans even marketed it as a tourist attraction. Theories as to the origin of the sound vary, with some suggesting it was morning dew evaporating within a fissure inside the damaged rock. Whatever the cause may have been, it no longer happens today, thus denying the archaeologists of our era the chance to study it. Everybody has heard of the Great Pyramid of Giza, but it's far from the only noteworthy pyramid in Egypt. Here's an Egyptian pyramid you probably haven't heard much about before, even though it's older than all the rest. It's the Pyramid of Dozer, and it's the oldest large stone monument in the world. We believe it was built more than four and a half thousand years ago and was made to entomb the remains of the great pharaoh Dozer. 
The 200-foot-tall pyramid is made of over 11 million square feet of clay and stone, and the design work is generally credited to the legendary Egyptian polymath Imhotep. Nobody had ever built anything like this before, and had it not been built, the Egyptians would probably never have gone on to build the Great Pyramid of Giza at all. Once upon a time, it was surrounded by a larger walled complex, containing temples and a courtyard. Secrecy was clearly important to Imhotep. There are no less than 13 fake doors to the pyramid's interior located around the perimeter. We may never know what truly lies inside. The Egyptian government doesn't allow anybody to enter. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.